This is Jack Jackson. In this video, we're going to talk about the, the um, mean absolute deviation, which is a measure of variability in descriptive statistics. So to kick this off, let's look at three data sets here. Data set A has the, the data value 0, 5, 5, 5, 10. Data set B has the data, has the data value 0, 4, 5, 6, and 10. And data set C has the data value 0, 2, 5, 8, and 10. So uh, what I'd like you to do is compute the minimum, median, maximum, mean, and range for each of these three data sets. Okay, so just review that a little bit before we go any further. Press pause now. Okay, when you're back, they're actually the same for all of them. All three sets, the minimum is 0, the maximum is 10. The mean and the median are both, um, yeah, the mean and the median are both 5, and the range is 10. So in this case, all of these are the same. Now let's try to do something else. What if you make uh, dot plots for these three data sets? Let's make them with three horizontal lines with the same scale and put kind of stack them up one on top of the other. Let's take a look at the dot plots there. When you finish, come back. Press pause now. So here are the data sets. Here's data set A. You got three dots uh, right here at five. Then you got zero and ten here. Here there. Here we have this, and here we have the data set B and then C. Okay. So again, as we measured by the range, these three data sets have exactly the same amount of variability. The range is tens each time. However, if we consider all the other data values, data set A has the least variability overall because it has several data values packed really closely to the mean. In fact, three are right at the mean. Whereas data set C is the most spread out with data set B being somewhere in between. So what we would like to do is to develop a uh, measure of variability that's a little bit more sophisticated than the range it takes into account all of the data values. Now it is true in this case that the, uh, the interquartile ranges are different and that would that would uh, basically take care of uh, describing that, that these get are in increasing order of variability. But even then I could make up some data sets with the IQR was the same and yet there was some uh, the same sort of thing was happening. So we really want to have a measure of variability or measure or measures of variability that take into account all of the data values. So let's take a look at this. Um, suppose we have this particular data set. Now the data set's got the purple background. We have 4, 5, 8, 10, 11, 12, 14, 14, 15, and 27. I've already put them in an increasing order. And the number k is just a counting variable or index variable. This is the first one, the second one, the third one. Uh, actually in the increasing order. So it's actually the rank of it as well. So x sub, x sub 1 is 4, x sub 2 is 5, x sub 3 is 8, x sub 4 is 10. And I've already added those up here for you and notice that that's 120. And if we divide by uh, 10, we get 12. Okay, now the formula says the right thing. 120 divided by 10 is 12, and that's x bar or the mean. So the mean is 12. Note n is 10. Okay, so we have the mean. So the thing I want to look at now is what if we look at these as their deviations for the mean? How far are each of these values above or below the mean? So the mean will take that as a measure of center, and we're going to see how far above these or below center these are with center being measured as the mean. So actually take these, and what I want you to do is take x, the x sub k's and subtract x bar. So I'll do the first one for you, and then I'll let you to finish the rest. So this would be 4 minus 12 is negative 8, indicating that the 4 is 8 that units below the uh, mean. I'll do the last one for you, too. 27 minus 12 is 15, so that says that that is 15 units above the mean. And then what if we just add up all those deviations and see what happens? See if you can do that on your own. Press pause now. Well, 
here's what we get. And an interesting thing happens. When you add up all these deviations, you get zero. And it turns out that this is not a fluke or, or a unusual thing. It actually happens every single time. Okay, so a negative here means that some values are below the mean. Zero means that actually is the mean, 12. And these that are above the mean have positive values, so 15 is 3 above. It turns out that these negatives and positives will cancel each other out every single time. And it's for this reason that we can think of the mean as being a center point or balance point or center of mass for a dot plot. Okay. So that as, you know, you might think, well, we could add these up and use that as, as a measure of, of um, variability, but, in turn, but it turns out that these positives and negatives cancel each other out, so that's absolutely worthless as a measure of variability. What we want to consider is, is we really don't care whether it's above or below the mean. Whether it's 8 above or 8 below the mean, that still has to do with variability. So we need to turn all these things positive. And there are two ways to make these deviations all positive. One way is to just take the absolute value of everything. everything. Another way is to square all these values. Taking the absolute value of each one leads us to the measure we want to discuss in this video, which is the mean absolute deviation. And squaring leads to the more commonly used measures we'll look in our next video of variance and standard deviation. So for right now, what I'd like you to do is now take the absolute value of all these and then average the absolute values. Press pause now. Well, you're back. This is what we're wanting to do here. We're basically wanting to figure, fill out this. So we're finding the average, the mean, of all these absolute values of the deviations. That's the mean absolute deviation. So here's the formula for it. We take the x of k's, we first add them up and divide by how many we have to get the sum of the x of k's divided by n to get the, the mean, so 12 is the mean. Then we take the x k's minus the x bars, these are the deviations for the mean. We take the absolute value of all those things, add them up, <coughs> and then multiply by 1 over n or divide by n. Now if this is a sample, this is a sum from k equals 1 to little n of the absolute value of x of k minus x bar, because x bar is the sample mean. And this is what we call the mean absolute deviation, MAD for short. If it's for a population, then it's capital N, because it's the sample, not sample size, but the population size now. And instead of the sample mean, we have the population mean, which is mu. But it's exactly the same formula. And we'll call, again call that the mean absolute deviation. We'll use that capital letters here to indicate population lowercase for a sample. So see if you can complete this table and figure out the mean absolute deviation. Press pause now. Well, you probably already had this done now. Uh, easy to take absolute values, add them up to get 46. Divide by 10, you get 4.6, which is the mean absolute deviation. Okay, pretty simple way of doing it. Now, the mean absolute deviation is not used as often as the standard deviation, which we'll talk about in our next video, but it is a very legitimate measure of variability uh, that you see, can see how to compute here.